Autoimmune hemolytic anemia is a condition in which a person's immune system goes haywire and produces substances called autoantibodies that destroy their own red blood cells. There are two types of autoimmune hemolytic anemias. Cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia, in which the symptoms typically occur abruptly and resolve after some time, and warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, which may develop gradually over time and persist for years. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia accounts for approximately 5% of all cases of hemolytic anemias. Amongst these, the warm antibody type comprises of 80 to 90% of cases, while cold antibody type occurs in 10 to 20% of people. The two types of autoimmune hemolytic anemia are differentiated based on the temperatures at which the autoantibodies stick to and destroy red blood cells. In the warm antibody type, the autoantibodies destroy red blood cells at temperatures equal to or greater than the normal body temperature. On the other hand, the cold antibody type is characterized by autoantibodies that are most active only at temperatures well below the normal body temperature. The symptoms of autoimmune hemolytic anemias vary with the degree of anemia and the type of anemia. People with minimal RBC breakdown have no symptoms, whereas others report tiredness, dizziness, shortness of breath, and a feeling of racing heartbeat. More so, when RBCs rupture, they release a red pigment called hemoglobin. This red pigment soon breaks down into a yellow pigment called bilirubin, which imparts a yellowish tint to the skin, eyes, and urine. Cold antibody types can also cause the fingers and toes to turn purple on exposure to cold. The liver and spleen tend to enlarge because the destruction of red blood cells in AIHA takes place in these organs. Initially, the body tries to compensate for the loss of RBCs by making more red blood cells in the spongy part of the bone called bone marrow. But since the RBCs are destroyed too early at an exceeding rate, they become trapped at an immature, young stage called the reticulocyte stage. Elevated reticulocyte count is therefore a marker of all hemolytic anemias, including autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Blood tests can identify anemia as well as determine the cause of the autoimmune reaction. Some patients with autoimmune hemolytic anemia may need blood transfusions and corticosteroids or medications that suppress the overactive immune system, while others with more severe disease warrant removal of the site of RBC destruction, that is, spleen. For more information about autoimmune hemolytic anemia and a list of expert doctors, please visit www.expertdocs.com.